people are not going to see everything, especially on social media nowadays. Your audience is seeing like hardly anything you post, unfortunately. So it really is about just putting it all out there because you don't know how much people are going to actually see. And the more that they do see, they see that you have value. They see that you are now an expert. They see that you are now credible in what you do. And they just continue to get validated with that mindset time and time again. So it just makes sense. Put everything out there. I guarantee you most people. There's going to be like maybe 0.5% who are going to take it and be like, oh, I'm good. I don't need you anymore. Exactly. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket because I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing. I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry because it's time for the daily bread. What is up, everybody? This is the Breadwinner Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I'm extremely excited to have a special guest on today, and that is Miss Jen Esquer, otherwise known as Doc Jen, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm extremely excited to have uh, Jen on today, and we've been working on this for a while to, to coordinate this and the schedule. I was looking up some stuff on you. And I love the fact that I don't know if this was self-proclaimed or not, but it said the best way to describe you was a mover. Yes. And I love that. Like that's, that's the most incredible way to describe someone, especially when you look at your body of work and what you're actually doing. Um, but the other thing I read was it said, your mission is to heal the world through empowering others to learn how to heal themselves. And uh, I thought that was awesome. And so what I want to do is is we're going to bring Jen on, um, have her tell you a little bit about who she is, where she's from, and, and what her main focus is uh, right now. So Jen, I really, really appreciate you being on and, and look forward to the conversation. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on as well. And I love the intro because... A mover is what I define myself on. You know, a lot of people like to put you in a specific box of something. So if I do a lot of handstands, I'm a yogi. If I do this, I'm that, you know. And we define people by what we typically know, which isn't bad. It's just it becomes part of the norm of what people know, and it's easier to classify. Um, but I, across the board, love movement. I think we should be exploring movement and kind of seeing what our body is able to do, whether, you know, that's running a marathon to doing some body weight exercises to lifting heavy. It can go across the board as to what our body is able to accomplish. So that's why I like to say mover, because I like to explore what my, ba what my body is capable of beyond what we think it is, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we, we're not even using even a portion of our capability within our body. And that's why I want to empower others to start to tune in. Because when you start to tune in and really start to take appreciation for everything that your body is doing for you and has the ability to achieve, that's when we really start to find that appreciation and move more, become more active in our lives and actually start to explore. That's awesome. And so, so basically... It's a movement movement. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if anyone's ever said that, but I'll, I'll claim that. I want to talk about a couple of things. So you've got the mobility method. You've got yeah. the optimal body. But let's talk about kind of stepping out from what was your career into doing your own thing. And mm -hmm. what was that like for you? Because you, you came from a more traditional background of – your education and then the job, but then that quickly turned into you stepping out on your own and saying, look, I'm going to go do my own thing. And for a lot of people out there, that's obviously there's a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety involved in that. So what was that process like for you as you stepped out on your own? Um, I would say it was a pretty daunting at okay. first. I, I went and I worked at a physical therapy clinic because getting out of school, I'm like, as a lot of physical therapists feel, we're not confident, we still need skill work, we want mentorship. So I went and grabbed that mentorship early on, and I worked in a clinic for about a year and a half until it was 
I started getting people to reach out to me personally who wanted to work with me outside of the clinic. And a lot of people I started to hear were coming in and paying cash to the clinic just so that they can see me. And then aside from just getting recommendations and getting people wanting to see me privately, I was starting to get other opportunities outside, be able to go to events, be able to meet people, be able to connect in this world that was outside of just physical therapy. And so I decided, you know, now's the time. I have a career. I can always go back if I needed to. But if I don't just make the leap and take it, I am I could regret it. I could miss out on more opportunities that could further me and help more people. So it just became something that in like a day I switched and I emailed my bosses right then and I said, I need to talk to you on Monday. <laughs> and I got a response back like right away, like don't leave us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I knew what was coming. And I, and I told them like, unfortunately I only have a week cause I got to figure out how to now be an entrepreneur and work on my own. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I gave them a week's notice. It ended up being okay and everyone left on really good terms, but it just became a switch. Like I, yeah. I followed my path and I felt like, you know what, now's the time. And I'm ready. I didn't do it because someone else told me I needed to. And I, I did it because I felt it's, it's now. Yep. It's time. And I love that answer because, you know, I've always said if somebody walked into my office right now and they said, hey, you know, come outside. There's a guy tightrope walking and, and you look and he's got this big safety net underneath him. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But if somebody came into my office right now and was like, hey, there's this guy, he's, he's extended from this building to that building. There's no net. Like I'm sprinting out to check this out, you know, to see if this guy falls. Yeah. And a lot of times it's that safety net that ultimately holds people back from success when they do venture out on their right. own. Um, but I love the fact that you just said you, you felt it and you just went with your gut and said, nope, I'm done. This is what I'm yeah. supposed to do and just did it. That's that's yeah. awesome. The main focus of what I want to talk about is the fact that as, as I look through your Instagram, look at all the things that you're doing, you're giving out all your best stuff for free. And that's what I've done from day one on social media is I'm just putting out value every single day and never asking for anything in return. Um, it's something I learned from Gary Vaynerchuk. It's um, a lot of people are fearful of doing that. They're like, oh, well, I've got my secret stuff. Like, I can't get all, all the good stuff. And then, you know, what, what, what's going to be left? But you're truly, you're giving out everything. And the truly successful people will be able to do that. And it's commendable because most people won't. So talk a little bit about that really mentality-wise, uh, what gave you the audacity to go out and do that. And then kind of how that's progressed as your uh, career has moved forward. Yeah. So really, it's, it's been an amazing process, mm -hmm. um, you know, with being able to take that in and just kind of go for it. I, I actually met someone uh, right when I graduated grad school. I was not sharing educational tips. It was all fitness related and it was all about my handstand. <laughs> um, and then once I graduated, I met up with my friend who was already doing a lot of the rehab stuff. And he said, why don't you just start sharing some educational tips? People think you're a yogi, start talking to yogis and start, you know, doing the anatomy and the education. And I said, okay, I don't know how I'll do, but I'll try. And once I did that, it just started to take off. I grew exponentially compared to what I, what I was at by just sharing fitness and cool videos. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it started to become more about, okay, how can I provide more value? How can I continue to educate? And the more that I did that, the more that it grew. So why would I hold anything back yeah. if I don't share everything, you know? And then on top of that, you get so many people that are constantly coming and they're asking for something that you've posted a while back. So you can be like, scroll through. I mean, people are not going to see everything, especially on social media nowadays. Your audience is seeing like hardly anything you post, unfortunately. So it really is about just putting it all out there because you don't know how much people are going to actually see. And the more that they do see, they see that you have value. They see that you are now an expert. They see that you are now credible in what you do. And they just continue to get validated with that mindset time and time again. So it just makes sense. Put everything out there. I guarantee you, most there's going to be like maybe 0.5% who are going to take it and be like, oh, I'm good. I don't need you anymore. Exactly. <laughs> 
party are not going to be able to put that together. They're not going to be able to package it the way that it needs to actually be delivered to help them succeed. So being able to just give value and education, then say, hey, I have this all in one pretty place where you can now go and actually put it together for yourself. That's when they start to say, oh, well, she's already given me all this. Why wouldn't I want it? I wouldn't I want to, you know, take this and actually run with it. I love what you said at the end because you answered the very next question I had and you talked about putting it all in one place because that, that's what it's all about. It's, it's disproportionate value. Like you're putting it out every single day, but it's very interesting and I've never really thought about it that way is you said your way of ultimately monetizing that was giving people a place where it was all put together that they could follow it more systematically versus just getting little bits and pieces every day. And that's, that's extremely interesting. But the reality is the real reason why most people don't do it is because it's a lot of work to put that type of value out every day. I mean, people don't realize um, how much work is involved in curating and creating the type of content um, that you're putting out on a daily basis. And by doing so, you've created that disproportionate value to where whenever you do ask, it's almost like someone would feel guilty not to participate in something like that. They're like, Jen is getting, I mean, I've gotten so much from her over the last two years. How would I not buy this book when it comes out? How would I not plug into this program when it comes out? Because I've gotten so much, even if they didn't need it. Like, that's the funniest thing with me, like with Gary Vaynerchuk, like he comes out with these shoes and they're just the ugliest shoes on the planet. And, and I'm a big shoe guy. And I can't stand the way they look, but I literally feel like guilt in my heart for not having bought them because I've gotten so much value from them you know, over the years. And I'm like, man, like I just, I got to break down and buy these shoes knowing that I'll never wear them because I think they're hideous, but it's just, he's done such a good job of creating that environment to where the, the disproportionate value is so high that anytime he asks for anything, I'm like, sure, done. Yeah, you got it. Um, and that's what you're doing. And, but it makes sense the way you said putting all this stuff out there. But if you want it all in one concise program where you can actually follow it systematically, there's where you can go and there's where you can do it. And that's where um, the monetization happens. That's, that's right. so smart. Right.